Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be providing some background information on the envelope procedure for computing wind loads acting on buildings. And we're gonna be referencing ASCE 722, chapter 28. So let's go ahead and get started. This procedure, the envelope procedure, was developed from wind tunnel tests by taking building models and rotating them 360 degrees. Now, whenever you do that, and you're doing that in a wind tunnel, what you end up being able to model is an envelope of shear forces, uh, bending moments, and other load effects that are acting on the building itself. And so that's kind of how the theoretical aspect of the envelope procedure was first developed. Now, the envelope procedure is really handy because it's a fairly quick procedure, but it does have some limitations and some very specific applicabilities. So let's talk about that next. What is the envelope procedure applicable to? So I'm gonna change colors here. It's applicable first to low rise buildings. Okay, now what do we mean by low rise buildings? Well, if you go back to the definition of what a low rise building is in chapter 26 of ASC 722, a low rise building is one that's defined that has a mean roof height less than or equal to 60 feet and the mean roof height is less than or equal to the uh, smaller of the plan dimensions of the building. So that's the definition of a low rise building. So what we're saying here is you can only use the envelope procedure when you have low rise buildings. Additionally, some additional uh, applicability or limitations here. Your building must be regular shaped, okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, it's it's quite simple. You have no unusual geometry. Okay, um, and so you can see section uh, twenty eight point one point two for a little bit more information on that. So this is a great procedure when you have a nice rectangular shaped building. Okay. Um, what else is a limitation? Well, uh, you're gonna have some limitations on the roof, okay? So your roofs can be only flat, hip, or gable roofs, okay? So, um, that's pretty much the summary of what this is applicable towards. So if you have, a, um, again, a low rise building that um, has regular geometry, regular shaped, and either a flat hip or gable roof, this could be a great procedure for you to utilize when you wanna calculate the wind loads uh, acting, acting on different parts of your building, okay? So um, one other thing that we need to specify here, and that has to do with what are called torsion cases. So if you remember from uh, previous knowledge or other classes you may have taken, Torsion uh, occurs whenever you typically have either a torque moment or some kind of unsymmetric loading acting on your structure that causes the plan in the plan view of your of your structure to want to twist. Okay, so um, so oftentimes we do need to account for torsion cases. However, with the envelope procedure, torsion cases need not be evaluated if you have the following uh, scenarios. If you have a one story building with a height less than 30 feet, so the mean roof height is is less than 30 feet, which, you know, if it's greater than 30 feet, you can still use the envelope procedure, but you have to check torsion cases. Well, if you have a one-story building with a mean roof height less than 30 feet, not only can you use the envelope procedure, but you also do not have to check the torsion cases. Um, you also don't need to check torsion cases when you have one and two-story light frame buildings. Uh, you also don't need to check the torsion cases when you have one and two story buildings with flexible diaphragms, okay? So uh, that is in the code, that's in chapter 28, um, if you wanna take a close look at that uh, with your own eyes and your own reference, okay? So um, what next? Well, the next thing we're gonna do is discuss how we calculate these design pressures, okay? So I'm gonna call little P right here the design wind 
pressure, okay? Now, how do we calculate this? Well, the design wind pressure is made up of two general terms. You have what's called the exterior pressure, so I'm gonna call that P-E-X-T, and then you're also gonna have the interior pressure. I'm gonna put a minus sign here and say minus P-I-N-T, okay? Now, these, uh, these exterior in and interior pressures, when you combine them, when you say P-E-X-T minus P-E-N-T, you get the design wind pressure, and I'm gonna put a little note here in green for the main wind force resisting system. Okay, so if you remember the main for wind force resisting system is your main structural elements that are analyzed and designed to resist the wind. Okay, so that's not the, co that's not the components and cladding, that's not the facade, that's not girts and purlins typically. This is your main wind force resisting system which is typically made of beams, columns, frames, uh, roof trusses, um, the actual structural members, okay? So when you're analyzing and designing those, you want to say the exterior wind pressure minus the interior wind pressure, okay? So then the next question is, how do we calculate each one of these terms? Well, P-E-X-T, the exterior pressure, is gonna be equal to Q sub H times K sub D times this term, GCPF, okay? And we're gonna define these terms uh, in just a second. Um, the interior, P-I-N-T, uh, pressure is gonna be the same Q sub H times the same K sub D times this factor GCPI, okay? Now notice that these two factors, GCPF and GCPI, are different from one another, but the QHs are the same when you're calculating the exterior and interior pressure, and the K sub D is the same. So the only thing that's different between these two terms is, is the GCPF and GCPI, okay? So if you want to put this all together into this uh, total P equation, you can factor out some terms, and you can say QH times K sub D, times, I'm gonna open up kind of a big bracket, GCPF minus GCPI, okay? Now, uh, this is gonna be cranked out in units of PSF, and if you are looking at your ASCE 722 reference right now, this is given as equation 28.3-1 in the ASC 7-22 uh, document, okay? So now that we've defined this basic equation, let's talk about what in the world are all of these terms here that are showing up, okay? Well, let's start with one that we've actually seen before. Let's look at Q sub H. Well, we've seen Q sub H in our previous video. This is the velocity pressure, and this is typically in PSF, okay, but it's specifically at the mean roof height H, okay? So guess what this is? Well, this is basically the same uh, calculation that we saw in our previous video um, where, where we calculated Q sub Z, okay? But the difference is here, this is gonna be Q, we're gonna say QH equals Q sub Z when Z equals H, okay? Now, do you remember what this governing formula is? Well, again, QH is the same as Q sub Z, except your height that you're interested in is is the mean roof height, H, okay? And so what's this governing formula? Well, if you go back to chapter 26 um, in ASC 722, or you watch the previous video, this is 0 0.00256 K sub Z, K sub ZT, K sub E times V squared. Okay, now I'm not gonna redefine this formula because uh, I defined it in a previous video and we did an entire video example just uh, discussing QZ. Um, so this is pretty much the same thing, okay? But again, we wanna make sure we know that this is um, at a height Z equals H, which is the mean roof height, all right? Now, what about all of these other terms, okay? Well, the next term is K sub D. Now this factor, 
Um, it's, a, it's a factor based on the type of structure you have. And we can get this from table 26.1-1 in ASCE 722. Now it turns out K sub D equals 0.854 buildings, okay? Now K sub D is, could be a different number if you have a different kind of structure, but for the purposes of this video um, and most of my content on this topic, I'm just talking about buildings specifically. So KD is 0.85. For buildings okay now um, what about these gcpf well these are pressure coefficients okay so let's start with the first one gc gcpf and the other one was gcpi so gcpf is called the external pressure coefficient okay and we're gonna get this from figure 28.3-1 in ASC 722. So if you're following along with me and you've got your ASC 722 uh, book out, this is gonna be um, figure 28.3-1. And in my uh, document, it's on page 295 and it's extracted from a table in the middle of that figure. Okay. Now, why is why is you know this kind of an odd designation? All these letters. Well, the G uh, is meant to account for a gust effect, which is built into these coefficients from from that figure. Okay. So this is all one term. All right. This is all going to be collectively one number that you get out of Figure twenty eight point three dash one. Okay. Um, now, what about the other coefficient? Uh, very similar, but it was a little different, GCPI, okay? This one is the internal pressure coefficient, okay? And uh, this is actually going to be from a different place in AAC 722. This is going to be from table 26. 13-1 in ASC 722. So again, if you're following along with me, I would suggest you flip around and you identify these tables uh, and figures in your ASC 722 reference. Maybe put a tab on it or put a star by, by it um, so you know uh, where they are, okay? Um, and again, this has a gust factor built into it, so this is going to be collectively one uh, number, all right? Now, um, what next? Well, we have everything we need to piece together uh, P interior and P exterior and finally get P, right? So how do we apply P? Well, the design pressure, let's write this down, the design pressure P is applied to different zones on the building depending on the wind direction, okay? Now, ASC 722 categorizes this, this into two load cases. It categorizes it into load case one or load case two. And this is also from a figure we've been looking at. That's uh, in figure 28.3-1 of AAC 722 as well, okay? So if you're looking at, um, at that figure in, in your AAC 722, you have, uh, they, they show two kind of three-dimensional uh, buildings and they show uh, the wind direction, okay? Um, so load case one is showing the wind blowing on the longer part of the building, and load case two is showing the wind blowing on the uh, shorter dimension of the building. So I'm gonna kind of draw my own version of, of, this, um, of this part of the figure a little bit, but it's gonna be two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional. If I have a building here, okay, and Let's put this ridge here, all right? If I have the wind blowing in this direction, okay, this is gonna be load 
case one, all right? And then if I had that same building, and here's that ridge there, but I have the wind blowing in this direction, you see all that's on the short dimension, that's gonna be load case two, okay? Now, um, the figure in ASC 722, um, kind of gives some options of, uh, of like the attack angle of the wind, but I'm just drawing it, you know, a lot more simply um, in this video. So basically you've got load case one if your wind is blowing on the long, on either of the long sides of the building. And then you've got load case two if your wind is blowing on either of the short sides of the building primarily. And then if you're looking at ASC 722, um, you have the building separated out into these different zones, okay? Now, now, um, depending on what zone you're in, you're going to extract different GCPF values from that figure, all right? So we're gonna say obtain the GCPF values for different zones based on the two load cases and roof angle theta, okay? So again, it'd be great if you're following along with, with me with your own copy of ASC 722, okay? Um, now, if you're looking at that figure, you're gonna see um, what are the dimensions of the zones? Well, we're gonna write this next thing down. We're gonna say zone dimensions are based on zone E from the figures, okay? So if you're looking at that figure, zone E, for example, is gonna be about right here, okay? Zone E is gonna be about right here, and zone E is gonna have uh, dimensions of 2A on load case one, and on load case two, you're also gonna have 2A here, and there's another subzone here where you have a dimension. Let's put this over here. This is just regular little A, okay? Now, what is what is A? What is this little letter A here? Well, um, you can see the definition of A beneath the figure um, on uh, figure 28.3-1 under the, the notation. So it's like in the middle of the page, all right? So I'm gonna summarize how we calculate that dimension A uh, in equation form. It's in a couple of lines in the middle of page 295 of ASC 722. But A is computed as the minimum of 0 0.1 times the least horizontal dimension or 0.4 times the mean roof height, okay? But that must be bigger than or equal to 0.04 times the least horizontal dimension and three feet, okay? And we're gonna make a little note here. We're gonna say uh, C the exception um, see the exception that's listed on page 295 of ASC 722. It's an all capital letters exception, okay? But in general, this is how you calculate that dimension, little a. Um, this is the equation form of it. Uh, ASC 722 has it kind of written out in sentences instead, all right? So, um, so this is basically the summary of, of the envelope procedure. One more time, because it's kind of a, a lot to think about. It's uh, the envelope procedure is a procedure to calculate wind loads in different zones of a building. Okay, it's applicable to low rise buildings that are regular shaped and have flat hip or gable roofs. You can ignore the torsion cases uh, if you have uh, one of these situations. Um, we calculate the design wind pressure as exterior pressure minus interior pressure, and we have some terms uh, and, and equations here to calculate um, those, those uh, design pressures. We utilize the velocity pressure at the mean roof height to get those design pressures, and we apply 
those design pressures P to different zones, okay? Now, one other thing I'll, I'll um, mention here, okay? Um, if we want the base shear force, which we typically call capital V, we typically use only the exterior pressures, which we call PEXT, on the walls, okay, that are acting on the walls, not on the roof, okay? Um, and the reason why we typically only use the exterior pressures and not the interior pressures is because the interior pressures typically would cancel each other out because they're on the inside of the building and they're going in all different directions, okay? So um, we're going to take a look at this in a little bit more detail with a numerical example in the next video. This is just meant to be some background information on the envelope procedure. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe and check out the next video where we do an example of this. Thanks for watching.